Hello everybody, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding and cataloging the magical and pointing you to it. Today is October the 20th, and I'm here with another drawing, another Halloween treat for you today. Uh, the same disclaimers as always uh, on these apply. Those are detailed in my, the first video in this series. And with that out of the way, I'm going to jump into today's drawing. Today's drawing is Governor Ratcliffe from 1995's Pocahontas. Now, Pocahontas is a bit of a mixed bag for me. I didn't choose this character because of, um, you know, my extreme love for the film or the character or anything. I chose him because I think he's actually um, visually interesting uh, and interesting to draw and look at. Um, I like the character design, which actually was uh, done by uh, Duncan Marjorie Banks, who was the supervising animator on Governor Ratcliffe, and he and his um, team of, of animators, I think, did a pretty good job of making this character visually interesting. Um, the movie itself, like I said, is a bit of a mixed bag. I think that, um, you know, Disney made a pretty big misstep in trying to tell a historical story. I think the lesson learned is Disney should, with their animated movie, should probably stray um, from history, particularly history that's based on, you know, very uh, famously unreliable narratives. Um, primarily because, uh, you know, they, in the course of, a, of an animated film, and especially when they're trying to tell their own princess story and everything like that, they just end up oversimplifying, um, at best, they end up oversimplifying uh, a really complex historical um, account that uh, you know, can potentially misinform or damage, um, you know, on really important issues that have, that deal with colonization and genocide and, um, c the confrontation of colonizers with the First Nations and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's extremely complicated. Um, and while I don't think that, um, you know, Disney necessarily, portrays that sort of stuff in a negative light necessarily in this film. I think they tried in their context to sort of do their best with that, but there was no way that they were ever going to uh, end up coming out successful on the other side of this. They just chose the wrong thing. Uh, they should just should not have done something historical, and this particular story was not a good choice for them because it, then they, they pretty much walked straight into um, having to oversimplify everything and not give it the complexity it deserves and the fact that they're, these people are, were real people with, um, you know, real issues and, and personalities and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's just difficult water to tread into. So, um, I don't think that they totally crashed and burned, but I think that they set themselves up for an impossible task that they basically failed at, um, in terms of, uh, the narrative that they chose. That being said, I do think there are things to recommend this movie. I think it's visually interesting. I think the animating teams, this was at the tail end of what's known as the Disney Renaissance, and I think the animated animating teams at that point were pretty much at the top of their game uh, in terms of um, their style, and I think that this is a very visually interesting movie um, and pleasant to look at. I also think that it's a you know, middling to not so good movie that is elevated by Alan Menken's incredible music. Uh, he was doing some of his best work in this movie and in that surrounding era. He was just also totally at the top of his game. And his music, I think, elevates this movie from being maybe not so great to being okay, uh, which is why it ends up being a mixed bag because there's a lot um, to recommend about this movie and really an, a, a lot of problems. So, um, it, like I say, it's a pretty, a pretty mixed bag. I'm not totally down on it. There's a lot of things I like about it, but it's, it's hard for me to say that it's great by any stretch. At any rate, that's kind of my brief spiel on Pocahontas. To get deeper into those issues would, um, take a lot more time and be a different video for a different day. And also, a lot of people have commented on it. A, a lot of ink has been spilled on those particular topics. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that you can 
go find out about it. Um, but this character in particular, I think, is, like I said, is kind of um, a cool design. Interesting to look at. Um, as a character, he was bit loosely based on historical figures himself. There was a person named John Ratcliffe who was not actually involved in... Um, you know, John Smith's time. He was somebody who was in England. He's also somewhat based on uh, Gilles de Ritz, who was a French uh, person. And, you know, they sort of just loosely combine the looks and stuff of those historical people. And like I said, they, they really weren't even doing justice to the complexity of the colonizers, let alone the colonized uh, in this film. So anyway, that's sort of the loose, the loose basing. But after that, you know, where they sort of went on their own, he's lazy, self-indulgent, he's greedy, he's a little bit of a dandy with the way that he's got his pigtails and cape and all of that stuff. Um, he wants to find gold and riches and hoard them all for himself, and he, you know, lazes around while the other people work really hard, that kind of thing. Uh, he's a little bit like Cla Claude Frollo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame in that... Uh, he believes that he's doing what is right, which is one sort of small aspect in which they get, um, in which Disney sort of gets colonial narratives a little correct, in which, um, you know, a lot of these colonizers thought that they were doing things for their country and for their crown and for their king and all of that stuff, and that they had a, a a manifest right to do that, that they had a God-given right to do that, and so on. And that is expressed a bit in the film. Um, obviously, it's they don't really do full justice to it, but that's kind of the idea behind it. He's not nearly as well-defined or well-drawn of a character as Claude Frollo. That's kind of where the similarities end, but he does have that aspect of sort of believing that he's right and being unaware that he is a horrible human being and doing bad things. Um, he can be seen somewhat in the Florida parks at Disney. He's not super, um, available all the time. He's a little rare, but he is in the, uh, Disney Hollywood Studios version of Fantasmic. There's a segment of that which features Pocahontas, essentially, and that the, somewhat of the story of Pocahontas and Ratcliffe is involved in that. Um, so he can be seen from time to time down there, but he's pretty rare, um, he was voiced by David Ogden Steers, who was a brilliant actor. We, uh, he unfortunately passed in 2018, but before he did, he had, um, a very, uh, known career. Most people probably know him as Major Winchester in TV's M.A.S.H. Uh, he was well known for that role, but he had a lot of voice roles, particularly with Disney. He voiced both Ratcliffe and Wiggins in Pocahontas. He was the voice of uh, Dr. Jumba Jukaba in Lilo and Sti the Lilo and Stitch series. He was Fenton Q. Harcourt in Atlantis, The Lost Empire. He actually voiced the Archdeacon in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And he was the voice of both the narrator and Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast. Uh, fans of Cartoon Network's regular show will recognize him as the voice of Mr. Maillard. So he had quite uh, a voiceover career. He worked with Disney quite a bit. Um, throughout the Disney Renaissance and stuff like that. And like I said, a lot of people will definitely recognize him um, at, for his role in MASH. So he was a really uh, great talent that uh, helped bring this role and many, many others to life. So from that aspect, from the voicing aspect and the character design, uh, I think he is an interesting character. As far as, you know, the script problems, you know, it, Pocahontas isn't the greatest. Um, so there you have it. Governor Ratcliffe from Pocahontas. I think he's a pretty cool um, design, and I'm happy with the way the drawing turned out. Essentially, that's why I chose him. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you liked it um, and that, you know, you learned some stuff here about the character and the film and everything like that. Thanks, as always, for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for following me throughout the month of October. I hope this was a nice little spot in your day to think about some Disney characters or think about some of these things more critically in a way that you probably haven't before. That's definitely what I'm doing. They're, you know, learning more and trying to um, develop my views and opinions on these things and my understanding of them and 
animation history. It's just one of those things I'm fascinated with and learning all the time about, and I hope that you are too. So thanks as always for joining me on these. I'll be back tomorrow with another Halloween drawing, another Halloween treat. And until then, take care. I hope you're having a great one. Bye-bye.